Hi. So last time I was talking more about self-love and I'm going to continue to talk about that right now because I was just talking to one of my friends and something just clicked in my head that I wanted to share with you guys. And I think it'll make it a little easier also for you to understand where I'm coming from and what it looks like to actually demonstrate self-love. And she did give me permission to share her story with you just to let you know. So I'm going to, you know, I just kind of want to tell you what she was talking to me about again, to put it in a different perspective for you. So last time I was saying, you know, it's not that we can't love each other, you know, until we love ourselves, but when we don't love ourselves, it's like, we're not reaching out to people and loving them in a connected way, because how can we really be doing that in all honesty, if we are not connected to ourselves? That's why I believe in, you know, connection so much. I always use that word because the more we connect to who we are and heal from those wounds and really peel away those layers, the more we start to see ourselves and the more we accept what we see and who we truly are, the more we're genuinely able to give other people. So I want to continue to give you examples of, again, what that actually looks like. Um, You guys know I struggle with obsession. I was talking about that before. And her story, it kind of reminded me of that. So let me just tell you what she was talking about. So her her and her boyfriend have been together for about a, a little over a year. And they each have kids from different partnerships. You know, so they're working through all these things. And uh, I've t- we have talked about their relationship a lot, so I already know the backstory. But what happened in particular this weekend, they went away and they brought all of his kids, like her kids uh, stayed at home. So it was them two, and he has six kids. So I know it was a little overwhelming for her, and she hasn't spent a whole lot of time with them. So it was, you know, kind of a new experience for her. And she was cooking, you know, doing the cleaning, like helping him do everything. And he wasn't really giving a lot back, but he's the kind of person that will sit there and text her. I love you. I miss you thinking about you like multiple times a day. Good morning. Have a good day. Thinking of you. Love you. And she's telling me this for a reason. (laughs) And, um, so while he's saying all that cute stuff, but when they were, you know, away on their trip, She was the one that was kind of doing everything. He didn't say thank you. He didn't offer to help her at all. He wasn't showing any type of gratitude that she was, you know, being nice to his kids and having to deal with that. Like he just wasn't showing her anything. (laughs) He would just, you know, kind of be off cooking or it's almost like he was just expecting her to fall into this role. And so I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But so here's like, here's the kicker. She got a phone call and her son, you know, something happened with him. I'm not going to go into detail, but he basically almost died and he had to go to the hospital. And so obviously she was like, I'm done. Like, I need to leave now. And so she got in her car and, you know, left. But before she left, she made sure that his kids were taken care of, you know, that they were all fed and that things were situated before she took off. And he was just kind of like, okay, well, dang, that sucks. Like that our weekend got cut short, but I'm going to stay here with them. And, you know, we're going to just continue to have a good time. Bye. Like call me later. And I was just like, what? Like your kid almost, your son almost died. And that was his reaction because I was just telling her, you know, if that would have been me, like if I would have been her boyfriend, for example, I would have been like, you know what? Like, go, don't worry about anything that's going on here. Like, I'll help you pack. Like, what can I do for you? You know, it's like, I know he couldn't just leave the six kids and I know they can't all go to the hospital. I get that. But there was more that he could have done for her and he didn't. And then, you know, that was obviously making her upset. But then the next morning he texts and he's like, oh, hey there, sunshine. Like, I'm so happy to be with you and I love you and I miss you. And it's like... Um, how's your son doing? Are you okay? How are you feeling emotionally? Like, what's going on? What can I do for you? No, nope, none of that. And so I was asking her, well, how did that make you feel? Because remember, there's always an emotional layer. She's like, well, I, it felt like he didn't appreciate me, like he didn't value who I was. And, you know, it wasn't so much that she was expecting him to do 
a whole lot of things, but gosh, you could at least ask, what can I do for you? How can I help? You know, are you, are you okay? Like I'm here. Even if we don't necessarily know how to do that, those are skills that we need to learn how to do for each other so that we can have better relationships with each other. And again, on here, I try to teach you that. Like, um, you know, a big thing you can just ask somebody if you don't know what to do for them, ask them, what do you need from me? What can I do for you right now? And let them tell you that that's okay to ask that very directly, very specifically, because we don't always know what to say. And so I said, but how did it make you feel? She said, well, it felt empty. Like he didn't really care, even though he always says, I love you. And I'm the kind of person I don't, um, if I'm in a relationship, I'm not saying it all the time. I don't want to hear it often. It's not a judgment to anybody who does that. Cause I know a lot of people that say it every day, multiple times a day to each other. I'm like, I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to, I want you to demonstrate it to me on a regular basis and that will feel good. So I don't know. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but I just, I know a lot of couples that do that, and I feel like it's overcompensation because it's like, yeah, you could say it 20 times a day, but if I don't feel like you love me, then it doesn't count, and what are you doing to actually show it? That's different. And so I just thought that was interesting, and then the word she used was it felt empty, like it wasn't real. And then he uh, texted her while we were talking, and he said, hey, love you, obsessed with you. And so that just like triggered something in me because you guys know I deal with the whole, you know, always being obsessed with somebody. And, you know, I've struggled with that for a long time. And it was just funny that he used that word. I'm like, that's not flattering. It's definitely OK to be enamored by somebody. You know, they're very beautiful to you. They're very attractive. You want to see them. You want to know what they're doing. You want to feel connected to them. That's OK. That's healthy. That's fine. But when it's like you know, oh my gosh, like, what are you doing every second of the day? And, you know, what are you, are you thinking about me? And I need you to tell me multiple times a day that I'm on your mind. And that becomes more of a crutch and something within ourselves that like we're trying to fill a void. You know, it looks different, like love and admiration looks different than obsession. And, um, and he still, he wasn't checking in on her and, you know, how her son was doing. I'm just like, gosh, that, that sucks. Like, I'm really sorry that that's happening. And so, you know, we're talking about that. But then it just clicked in my head also that, so, you know, I always talk about personal accountability also. And that's not just, oh, sorry, I fucked up, my bad. Like, no, pers- actually owning up to what you've done looks a lot different than that. But let me give you like a specific example like what I was telling her is, so let's say that, you know, like there have been times where I've gotten myself in situations where I'm purposely trying to piss somebody off or, you know, the gaslighting, you guys can look up what that means. I've admitted that I've done that before or somebody's irritating me. And so I just want an opportunity to get pissed off and yell at them. That's because in that moment, I'm feeling powerless, and that's me trying to take my power back in a very unhealthy way. It's not okay to do that. I'm not suggesting that it is. I'm just admitting that I've done that a lot. And so me, the reason why I say we need to deal with our childhood wounds, the reason why I always go back to that is because you can't just change a behavior without understanding the subconscious reasoning behind why you're doing those behaviors in the first place, because most of our behaviors are driven by things that have happened to us in the past. Why do you think I felt so powerless all the time? For those of you that have been watching, you know, I'm very pretty open about the fact that I was sexually abused. I was abused on multiple levels. You know, it's like D all of the above. I'll just check that box. But the sexual abuse is the one that's definitely impacted me the most, I would say. And I know it makes sense, right? <laughs> but the gaslighting, so I would go and I would ruffle feathers and just piss people off because then they would start yelling and it's like, good, now I can yell at you even louder because I need to feel strong and super powerful because whatever just happened, I got triggered and I started to feel real small and I started to freak out. So I needed to find a way to puff myself up to make myself feel better. 
And a lot of us do things, not the same exact thing, but we do things like that because we get triggered. But now me actually taking responsibility for that behavior doesn't just look like, yeah, my bad, you know, I was just being a bitch, sorry. Like, you know, I just, I'm kind of angry sometimes. No, that's not me owning what I did. Me owning what I did would be me taking a step back and saying, why did I just do that? Why am I trying to piss people off? Like, why am I even feeling so angry right now? What am I actually feeling? Powerless, small, little, um, scared. But we have to get real with our shit before we can even do that, which is why I say, you know, take a moment to think about what you're feeling. It's really hard to do that because we don't, the words don't just come naturally to us. I know those words now and I can say them very easily, but go there with yourself. So me holding myself accountable would be me saying, you know what? Um, I got yelled at a lot when I was younger and um, you don't have to go into detail with people about what you've been through. I'm not going to say, oh, I was sexually abused. So I was just trying to feel powerful. <laughs> like I won't say that to just anybody, but I will say that to people I trust and that I feel safe with. But what I would say in that moment is, you know what, I, or even to myself, you know, what? I'm acting like an asshole. Like I just started to feel so uncomfortable and unsafe. And I just felt so powerless that I needed to, I was trying to take my power back by making everybody else feel bad. I was trying to take my power back by yelling at everybody and they didn't deserve that. That's my shit. My childhood wounds. That was something I experienced, you know, that I did. And I totally just projected that onto everybody else. And that was not okay. Now that I realize that, so now what I can do, and then you go and you connect back to those experiences and those wounds, you have a good cry and you release that toxic energy. But also what you do is, okay, now that I'm aware that I'm gaslighting and that I'm trying to piss people off because I need to feel powerful, guess what? Now, next time I see myself doing it, I was like, Rebecca, what are you doing? Like, you're doing it again. What am I doing? You know, it's like, I'm not doing anything because I could have just excused it. Oh, I was just, I was just having a bad day. I'm angry. That's an excuse. Personal accountability looks like those are my wounds. And you know what? I... I just projected them onto you and that wasn't okay. And I'm sorry. And I'm going to try to do better. And what that looks like is next time when I'm feeling pissed off and angry and, but really I'm actually feeling weak and powerless and vulnerable and scared. Cause remember anger <clears throat> is a secondary emotion. So next time I'm feeling like unsafe and I see myself starting to do that. And now I can start redirecting those behavior patterns. But I couldn't have done that if I didn't understand that it was a wound. It started as a wound. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? That's why I keep telling you, go back to the childhood stuff because it has affected you. And that's okay. Like, I'm not saying it's not okay. It's not a judgment. It's just something that we need to become aware of and get real about because it did affect us. And there are probably so many things that you do every day that you don't even realize. But, you know, I brought up the obsessing to kind of make that point about, you know, if we don't love who we are, it can kind of start to feel empty towards other people because we're needing them to fill us up. And that doesn't feel good for them necessarily, which is why I say love yourself first. And then part of us loving ourselves is us learning how to redirect our behavior patterns and learning how to get out of toxic cycles. Because now, like I said, you know, if I need to start feeling powerful, I'll go have a cry instead of yelling at everybody because it's not okay to yell at everybody. They don't deserve that. And so I just, I want you guys to continue to become aware of your behavior patterns and things that you do and go back to the wound that it probably actually came from. Recognize when it's your shit and you're actually, you know, pushing that onto other people. It's not okay to do that. Holding ourselves accountable is us realizing what we're doing and changing that and trying to do something better. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today. Think about it.